loves my baby But my baby don't love nobody but me Welcome back, everyone, to I'm No Genius. As always, I'm Eli, and today is just me and Cam. How you doing, buddy? Doing swell. How are you doing, Mr. Burgett? I'm, I'm doing good. I just got back from uh, my J-O-B about uh, two minutes ago, and, I'm, and mm-hmm. I'm, ready to, I'm ready to podcast because, you know, the grind don't stop with us. Isn't that right? Talk to me. Talk yeah. to me. Before this, I was actually uh, grinding a little paper. First big assignment of the year. Just twinkling the keyboard, nice, nice and easy. Now, what, what's the paper on? Uh, organizational change. We had to pick an organization that was on the brink of going to the shitter, and I picked Lego. Did you know Lego was at the was at bankruptcy in two thousand three? And then they came back. Came back, made some phenomenal moves. It's almost storybook with the fact that they're still alive. I mean, uh, Lego by uh, that kind of shocks me. I'm not going to lie, because Lego by mm-hmm. far. In the uh, world of toys that feature interlocking brick systems, mm-hmm. I think I think they're number one. Um, maybe maybe Duplo is probably number two or something. Maybe Lincoln Logs number three. So, you know, there's 915 million ways to interlock an 18 p- 18 fa- uh, like an 18 notch brick of a Lego to make something. 915, you said? Yes. Okay. I, mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if I said that right, and I don't know if that's true. Remember, yeah. get, you can find it in my uh, reference page, APA level formatting. Yeah, I, I want I want you to send that essay to me so we can so we can proofread that, work that oh. out later. Okay, good. Next next podcast, it's just we're just going to read it. Yeah, next that's, podcast that's going to be the podcast. We're just going to read my academic paper. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll proofread. I mean, uh, they say peer reviewed are the best essays, so. Or your peers, so that makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but uh, how how are your classes going? Other than the the one that you just banged out a paper for, um, pretty smooth right now. We don't have it's a they moved the classes to a four day week, so classes are longer, but it's only Monday through Thursday, and then Friday, Friday they have like the freshman first year experience that I still have to go to because I never passed. Um, but I, I still go to that. Just, I mean, third year in a row, you might hopefully learn how to do my laundry or uh, how to avoid devastating body odor. Wait, so you, you so never... Fingers, fingers crossed. You never passed that class? What what happened? Um, I was... They said I was too gifted for it is uh, how they let me down easy. But it's just because I never put on deodorant or did my laundry, and that's like half of the class and then the final project is scavenger hunt the pumpkin show and i held pumpkin man captive and that raised all kind of issues with the school so they weren't a fan okay yeah and for various yeah. reasons I, I can i can imagine why especially a basketball player the one who's representing the school that would not look good for them so and then last year i just i took i to take it again so i just refused to show up yeah. believe it or not i flunked that too so, wait, so on, on your actual transcript, does this say two Fs in the same class? It's a, it's actually a WTF because I'm the first student in Ohio Christian history to ever flunk the class, let alone twice in a row. I mean, you're you're quite the trailblazer, man, in more ways yeah. than one. So, yeah. Hey, hey, what can I say? They told me to blaze the trail, so I blaze them all. Yeah, exactly. Trailblazers in two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. But I, I do have to go to the first year experience because I'm a go-to peer. So the freshmen write in their journal and I grade the journal. Oh, that sounds terrible. Oh, wait, I think I had something like that. We had something like that at OSU because I had to take that my freshman year because, you know, I was an actual first year. And then uh, there were a mm-hmm. bunch of there were a bunch of sophomores there that were our, you know, uh, our peer mentors that I maybe talked yeah. to like once the entire semester. So that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to, to introduce everyone, last year you had to write, um, we did this year too, but like you had to write three things about you or whatever to show to the freshmen. Last year, Devin put quarterback of the football team. We don't have a football team. And he got like three people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. But I mean, the classes are going good. Other than, other than the first year experience, so you have to do yeah. it again. 
Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of leadership classes and um, one business class, international business. Which, which, which nations internationally? Uh, I'm me and my partner are a pharmaceutical company who are selling um, drugs. You're selling drugs, painkillers and antioc antioxidants or something in the United States, Finland and France. And we have oh. to change a bunch of numbers and like basically not screw anything up and see how much money you can make. And I, I kid you not, we were working out today in class. Every single I know, every single number I changed brought down the profit by at least a thousand dollars. And everything that my partner changed was like, she was like, "Oh, how did that happen? We got up to fifty five thousand. And I was like, "I'm at twenty five hundred dollars. Our revenues in the tank." <laughs> so, so now you understand how hard it is running a business. Yes, yes. I mean, especially. And I guess it's like. Sorry, go ahead. Especially the financial side of it, you know. I mean, the numbers mm -hmm. are hard. To understand. My mom's Very a math, my mom's a math teacher, so I would know about that. Yeah, numbers. You would know about numbers. Strictly I know because your mom's a math teacher. I know a lot about numbers. You have the luxury of. You have the luxury of numbers because your mom—that was your mom's profession. Exactly, and dude, you have no idea. I know like a hundred numbers. <laughs> if it weren't, <laughs> if it weren't for your mom, you would have never known any number. That was the dumbest sentence that I've ever said in my life. <laughs> I know a hundred numbers. Patty for the numbers. <laughs> yeah, all a hundred of them. <laughs> I know them. Yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but. I mean, uh, I know you didn't ask, but my classes are going good too. Um, oh, I was going, I was going to, I was, I was going to get there. I know, I, I, I trust that. You know, I just, I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to get to me really quick. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I. So it's a funny story. I almost had, I almost turned an assignment, turned in an assignment late today, uh, because you know, you know, normally in in college, I don't know if they have this at OS at OCU. Uh, we have like we have like a to do list and like a dashboard and everything, and it has like all of your assignments you have to do. Mm -hmm. But my uh, professor in my screenwriting class is mm, sounds exhilarating. Yeah, but he is also extremely old school and doesn't believe mm. in posting the assignments on the line. So mm. he he hands out a uh, paper paper. Like like syllabus uh, syllabi, if you will, mm -hmm. and we have I'm familiar. My mom, my mom used to be a lumberjack. So I'm familiar with the paper. Right, exactly. Yeah, you, you're yeah. you you've been a part of the paper game for God knows how long. Yes, but yes. um, yeah. So he he handed us like the paper syllabus and everything. He goes like, and all of the due dates for all the assignments are on there. And I was thinking like, okay, you know, okay, sure, whatever. I'll make this work. And then I I. Uh, I was basically goofing off all morning, you know, and like, like I woke up at like, you know, nine 30, made myself some breakfast and, you know, watch some YouTube or whatever. And then like 30 minutes before I had to go from my apartment to campus to uh, go to my screenwriting class, I saw that I had to write two synopsis, synopsi, synopsis, synopsi, synopsis, uh, synopsis, synopsis. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they were they were due like at the start of class. I had to have a hard copy with me. Now, if I if I just had to you know type it up and then submit it online, I could do that in like five minutes. But I had to have a hard mm -hmm. copy with me, so I had to run to campus even earlier and uh, go to the library, print out a couple hard copies. And my synopsis for like two stories that I was gonna write, uh, they were terrible. They <laughs> they were so horrible. They were so like you know uh, like. I'm trying. Actually, one was okay. One was okay, and two, and the second one was horrible. The first one was about it was a western. It was about an old outlaw mm. trying to escape his past, but his past catches up with him. And then uh, that's that's going to oh. be that's that's going to be coming out October 2026. So get ready for that. Um, and, Never and, seen that plot before. <laughs> exactly. But that was the good one, <laughs> and the okay. bad the bad one was. That didn't even make a whole lot of sense. Like it was this father visiting this convicted murderer who murdered his kid. I don't know why he was 
visiting him. I don't know who allowed that, but uh, just mm-hmm. and then uh, like you know he tries to like ask him why'd you do what you do, and he goes like Cause I like killing people. <laughs> Hey, sometimes it's fun, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, like, if I had, if I given <laughs> myself, if I had given myself more time, I'm sure I could have come up with a better reason. Yeah. But I was, I was pressed for time and that was it. So, um, I turned it in today. Uh, what, what, what are the expected grades on these <laughs> this assignment? I'm, I'm, How 90, are feeling? I'm 90% sure that these are completion grades. Like, and he's going to make like, you know, annotations and everything. So he's going to tell us like what was terrible <laughs> about it. Oh, I don't know. Just the joy of murder. And you're, yeah. <laughs> you're sick. I mean, it, like, look, I don't know what I was going for, man. I was, I was in the writing zone, but <laughs> it's just a synopsis. And you turn in the most detailed blood curdling story yeah. of how this father this, this father killed a man he's telling it to his son he's like uh, eli can i see you after class <laughs> in like a specific detail like i mean i would put in like this guy got away with it by doing this and like even police officers don't think about that it's like <laughs> yeah you have like time stamps and addresses in central yeah. ohio no not even central ohio it's like uh middle of nowhere missouri yeah just like random street names that are accurate. I, I I put it I put in something like uh our protagonist lives at uh such and such address and I put my professor's address. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like he sees me after class, he goes like, Hey Eli, uh you know, are you a, like are you an axe murderer? What are, are you are you a serial are you, killer? Are, you, are we are we good? Because yeah. this is terrific. <laughs> this is the best piece yeah, of like literature. If, if, if this is fiction, this is phenomenal. But if this is nonfiction, I need you to try these handcuffs on. Yeah, exactly, dude. Yeah, but I, I, I scooted by in that class today, and uh, that was all good, right. Good. But so far, my week is going great. <laughs> good. One time, uh, I don't. Know, were you in Mister McCorvey? You were in McCorvey's class freshman year, right? Yeah, big time. Honors English. One of our assignments was um, to write like a fictional story. It had to be like 10 pages long or something. And you had to make it all up. And I started writing this story about how the kid was. I started writing a story how this kid lived in a trailer with his mom. His dad was a piece of shit who like, like beat him every day. It was just like terrible to like. I was like five pages in and this dad was just atrocious. And I was like, I, I have to delete this because one, my, my dad rocks. Like he's never, he's never done any of this to me. And he's not like, he's a dick, but he's not, he's been nothing but kind. <laughs> and like, he's taken care of me and everything. And I've never had these feelings toward another human. And I don't know if they're real or if it's just like all made up. And I was like, I just, can't po- this isn't true like where's this coming from i don't like i have this random deadbeat dad that i just made in my mind that isn't real so i deleted the whole thing and then made some story about how some nerd got beat up at school and then he woke up in some like alternate dimension where a spider ate him <laughs> I, I, don't, I can't terrible. i can't remember if i was in your class or not but i remember that assignment and i don't remember either yeah but like the i remember the story that i wrote it was called Stop, <laughs> which, oh, which, which, like, uh, I should have, I probably should have taken that as advice when I was writing it. Just stop. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but uh, the story was about this uh, um, kind of a self-insert story, kind of an autobiography. This amazing mm-hmm. basketball player, like, like mine and my deadbeat dad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like yours. Uh, mine was about this amazing basketball player. Uh, ladies man six pack washboard abs and uh yes. he he you know he realizes that his life is too perfect and uh he loves to visit the stop sign every day 
<laughs> just to That's think of obeying the law. <laughs> just 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 to think about how how awesome he is or like how terrible is you know stuff like that and uh Mm -hmm. yeah and i remember i was reading by doing his civic duty and following uh, all traffic laws (laughs) exactly (laughs) he loves to visit this stop sign and i uh i remember i was reading it in class and i was actually feeling Mm kind of good about it i was feeling like this is this is pretty artistic like i mean I wouldn't be surprised if they like, you know, nominated me for a couple of awards or something. And uh, I read it. Yeah. I read I read it to our small group. And I think Adam was in my group. And and then at the very end, (laughs) at the very end, he goes, so it's a story about a stop sign. (laughs) That was the worst part about the assignment, because he would take your name off of it and then other students would read it and then they'd all stand in front of the room and talk about it. And I remember, I forget who was doing mine, but they're like, yeah, I mean, it started off normal and then he kind of just woke up, got eaten by a spider. It didn't really go anywhere. I was like, no, it checks out. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I was going for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, the, like those small groups in Mr. McCorvey's class where we just read each other's stories. That was that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, Mr. McCorvey's class. I think yeah. Mr. McCorvey's just a great dude. Shout out Brent. Yeah. I think because he said he was like, you guys are starting to become adults. You can start using cuss words in this paper. Like use them, use them correctly. Use them how you, like the right way. So <laughs> don't throw them places where they don't belong. Quentin starts his paper with this GDMF, just a whole sentence of cuss words. And then he was like, and Brent was like, oh, starting off fast, are we? Just yeah. the introduction to his paper is just his vocabulary. Exactly. I was going to say, like, that sounds a lot like Quentin. So. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But good. I mean, I, hopefully my writing will improve as the year goes along. And I learned something, but I'm not going to hold my breath about it. <laughs> nah, just eh, just get through it. Yeah, I plan on it. But oh my gosh! So when uh, I, I want to ask you really quick, when does basketball start up for you? When when do practices start up? Um, official practices is September 18th, but we've been doing stuff since. The first week of school, like we moved in on Wednesday and started doing stuff Thursday. Or moved in, classes started Wednesday. We started doing stuff on that Thursday. So we've been having conditioning in the morning, open gym at night, or individual skill workouts in the morning, and then lifting at night. So it's we're full bore, baby. And then practice starts September 18th because the NAI is the wild, wild west, no rules. Exactly, dude. Now these, uh, these. Uh, sessions that you're having before the official practices start are these uh, quote unquote optional? No, God no! I dare you show up late. Okay, so you're yeah. you're on time and you're at every single one is what you're saying because you don't yeah. shirk. You're not shirking at all. No, no. Well, that's good because you know we don't. Gotta I mean, there. yeah, because you know here at here at I'm No Genius, we don't normally get uh, a lot of college athletes on the show, and so Mm-mm. have. To have a, a resident mm-hmm. in a, in a IA athlete is uh, pretty Thank special. You. Thank you. I, I I don't I don't feel we talk Thank about you. that enough. Well, I I appreciate that greatly. Um, not a huge fan of how you just uh, spliced up college and then NAI, but we'll just we'll glaze past that. It's no big deal. What what's I mean? I'm just mentioning the conference you're in. Oh, I thought I thought you meant. I thought you meant it's not off. We have a college athlete, but we do have an NAI. <laughs> no, no. Oh, wait, wait. Let's rewind that. I take that back. That is what I meant. Oh, okay. So, okay. Like, that's exact. We're I mean, not I'll, fortunate enough to have a college athlete, but we got the third best thing. We have an NAI yeah. athlete here. Yeah. On, on I the mean, pod. obviously, like we would love to shoot for like a D one college athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, D two would would be next. Suffice. I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, D three, I mean, like D two or like you know, uh, semi pro athlete, you know, of some sort, mm-hmm. or maybe someone who plays on the Ocho, like ESPN mm-hmm. eight. Uh, yes, that would TV. that would still TV. That would be really cool. Then D three, and then uh, you know the the rest. 
after that. Yes. So <laughs> yes, that's exactly where I fall. Is the yeah. rest exactly? But uh, I mean, that's good. I mean, I'm glad you're starting up basketball, getting serious about it once again. It's almost that time of year. Uh, I'm hoping that I can come to more OCU mm-hmm. games mm-hmm. this year because I love watching you guys play. I hope, I hope you can. It, it's going to be an exciting year. Looking to win a whole hell of a lot more games than what we have in the past. Jimmy's yeah. in the corner just nodding his head. Oh, never mind. He's giving the thumbs down. Okay. Just kidding. Yeah. He's pumped. He's amped. Well, that's he's good. actually, he just got on the ground and started doing push ups right now. I, I mean, the laser is just running through him. Yeah. I mean, that's what we love to see. The The work ethic is obviously there. Uh, I'm practicing my interviewing athlete skills for uh, uh, Big Ten when, you know, when I'm in it, when I'm a reporter yeah. someday, uh, hopefully fingers when crossed. When I'm silent at USC. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, yeah. but, but right now they got me stuck behind the camera and I'm just shooting the, shooting the footage. That's all I got. But do you ever, do you ever just like keep your head around and just like forehead? I can <laughs> like, did you see me? Yeah. Just walk by and start, and start like going like this, like <laughs> start like picking my nose or like, yeah. You're like just tricking people left and right. Yeah. <laughs> I like they got the they got like the, the snack vendors or the hot dog vendors in the crowd and I just start following the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you just move away from your reporter and just start following random vendors. Yeah. Or I just zoom in on my you reporter zoom in. on my left on, my, on his left ear. Like so. <laughs> <laughs> just a random bird. Yes. Uh, Eli. Eli. Yeah. Eli. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Are you seeing this thing? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. We got, we got to get something way important. Like this looks like the hog that would mess Grant up. Yeah, oh, dude. I, I remember that story and I made you should two. interview. The, we should, <laughs> we should interview that hawk. We, we should interview that hawk. Honestly. I mean, if, if it can scare, yeah. uh, Grant, no, big. Grant no legs, then it'll be huge, right? I mean, yes, yes, yeah, tremendous. I mean, Grant talked about the the hawk twice on this podcast, and two times we have made a clip out of it and posted it on social media. So, I mean, it's quite I mean, the rivalry. The clout, has, the clout, the hawk has more clout than any of us. Yeah, I mean, it it probably has much more support. I think. I mean, aren't aren't birds very oh, supportive? Yeah. They're very supportive creatures. Well, that and he's got a free home for life in Grant's head. Yeah, that's true. He's li- he's living rent free, man. You know, but yep. uh, yep. yeah. Uh, okay, let's just go ahead and uh, rip this band aid off. Bob Barker's dead. Oh uh, well, what are you gonna do? Well, I know what we're gonna do about it. We're gonna celebrate his life. I love Bob Barker. I mean, Bob Barker, uh, for those of you who, you know, aren't cultured, who haven't had your finger on the pulse in, I don't know, like 70 years, however old he was, uh, Bob Barker was the critically acclaimed host of The Price is Right and also had a very, very hilarious appearance in the sports film comedy Happy Gilmore, and he knocked Adam Sandler out. Happy Gilmore, yes. Yeah. Yes, Bob Barker knocked out Adam Sandler and uh, stole the hearts of millions around the world. But sadly, he passed away recently. Um, but Cam, I mean, what are your thoughts on his untime? Well, I guess it is timely. You know, he, it was. His I mean, time. it was actually more than timely. Um, a couple of things. The Price is Right is one of the first TV shows that I can remember as a kid, which is funny because like after the age of six, I, I don't think I ever turned into The Price is Right again. Um, and it's also very funny that not, I guess not funny, but ironic that Bob Barker died at 99. He was the closest to a hundred without going over. You know, I mean, if you were to, if, if the, if the heaven almighty was to pick out an ending for this Bob Barker fella, that would be the way he would probably want to go out. I think. Yes. Yes. God definitely has a sense of humor. He definitely does. And now, uh, I mean, 
he's playing the Price is Right with the Angels at this point. So, I mean, who's who's yes. really who's every really winning? Hear, every time you hear thunder, it's just Plinko with yeah, old Bobby B. Exactly. But uh, Cam, I thought uh, something that would be nice to uh, honor the life and memory of Mister Barker would be to play uh, a Price mm-hmm. is Right game of our own of sorts. What, what do you feel about okay. that? You, you you into that idea? Uh, I'm very in. Okay, good. Because that's what we're going to do, and we've already announced it, so we're not going back. Um, but yes. so today I looked up um, random and bizarre things that celebrities have purchased, and I want you to guess how much money they paid for this random purchase. Does that sound like a good idea? I like this. I like this game. Okay, so let me go. Let me go to my notes here and, uh, well, (laughs) I mean, to the, to the, most of the listeners that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but I mean, it's an inside joke for us and we love it. Uh, all right. Cam, you there? I'm here. All right. So number one, I want you to guess how much money this celebrity spent on this item and then we'll go from there. So Kim Basinger, actress, okay. mo- actress most known for uh, L.A. Confidential and Eight Mile, she purchased uh, the entire township of Brazelton, Georgia. So she bought an entire town. Okay. Would you like? Would you um, like? Would you, would you like more information on it before you give your final, final uh, prices? Right. Yeah. How about how about for each one we give one hint. Or one tidbit of information. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so it was uh, 1,751 acres. And uh, she wanted to turn the to turn the town's farmland into a tourist attraction and film studio. So it's kind of it's more of an investment than just a luxury purchase. Oh, a really bad investment. T- terrible um, investment. If to buy a town it's a so i'm gonna go three million dollars you said three million yes it is actually 17 million dollars higher than that it is 20 million dollars wow yeah wow She, she paid 20 million dollars for a farm town but uh, she, the the actress eventually went bankrupt, and she had to auction off the town. So dang, that's a shame. That was a very bad guess by me. Um, it's, a, it's all right. It really, hurt. really hurts the confidence in the fact that I've been working with property, like property management, all summer. That hurts. Um, but I'm I'm a late bloomer. I'm a late bloomer, Alex. I'm gonna but, bloom and double jeopardy. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, uh, there's always time to come back. You know, it's just the beginning of the game. We're going to move right along, though. Uh, Thank you, So, me. Yeah. So, um, Magic Johnson bought... AIDS. Uh, no, he didn't buy AIDS. Uh, okay. He... By, by the way, quick quick side note. I'm watching uh, the TV show Winning Time uh, about the Lakers dynasty on HBO Max. It is... Or, sorry, Max. Yeah. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's it's like the best sports TV show I've ever seen. So it, it's really good. Really? I watched the first episode. And it was good. I just haven't got around to the second, third, fourth, or fifth. Uh, or the second season, for that matter. So, or the second season, yes. Yeah, but you know, uh, after this, uh, go watch it, and I'll, uh, I'll talk about it with you, and then we'll have homework after this. But anyways. Sounds good. Magic Johnson bought 30 Burger King franchises. So, so 30 restaurants. Yeah. I'm going to say they went for 30K a piece. So $900,000 would, that, it would put me at $900,000. So I'm going to guess $2 million. So 2 million for the entire pot. Mm-hmm. 30. Uh, no, it says, so he bought this back in 04. Mm-hmm. And it cost him about, uh, it says twenty five million dollars. How much? Twenty five mil. 
Oh God, I'm bad at this. <laughs> you're low. You're low ball and everything, man. Wow, I'm bad. Okay, but don't but don't worry. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna move on from uh, fast food franchises, and we're gonna move on to uh, two celebrities who are uh, kind of a uh, oddity in Hollywood. Um, Katy Perry bought her husband at the time, Russell Brand, a two hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollar ticket to space trip to space yeah did wait did i did i just tell you how much money it was did you say two hundred thousand dollars trip to space yeah um bobby i would like to guess two hundred thousand dollars please uh judges ding 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 yeah that's correct all right wow right on the dot thank you that was amazing and uh thank you we're, we're gonna catch ourselves for next time but uh, I'm just going to keep moving on. I'm going to forget that ever happened. Um, so uh, this one involves everyone's favorite celebrity baby daddy, Nick Cannon. Um, yes. Yeah, he has what, like, uh, it's it's like it's like 28 kids and counting now. Um, I'm not uh, sure. pretty. He's he's approaching Duggar numbers without all the like pedophilia and gross stuff. For sure. Well, I mean, there's bound to be some, you know, eventually. I mean, it, it is Hollywood after all. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But, so, uh, Nick Cannon and uh, Mariah Carey bought a candy filled room for their kids. You know, they have twins named Rock and Row. Fun fact for you. Did, did, they take, did they take the Cannon last name or Carey last name? I don't know. Maybe Cannon? Because Rock, cause rock, rock can- and Rose. Is rock, rock Cannon? Rock Carry? Rock Cannon? Row Cannon? Row Cannon. I mean, like, I mean, that, that sounds like. Rock I- Cannon sounds like an elite quarterback in the Pac 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It sounds like an XFL quarterback. No, nah, yeah, like this XFL, is- like Mountain West. Exactly. This is, this is Rock Cannon. Rock Cannon. Your list. Uh, Your a room list. full of candy. Yeah. I don't know because I thought I was going to say a trip to space was 10 million bucks. So now I'm all kinds of flustered. Yeah, exactly. Magic Johnson's buying Burger Kings for 25 mil. Um, hmm. Room full of candy. I'm going to go 750 grand. You actually shot over this one. It was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow, fifty thousand over. That's better than what I've been doing, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like I, I don't, I don't know what kind of candy they were filling it with, like, or like how was it like? I don't know if it was like head to like head to toe or like full, you know, volume candy. Like, I just don't know. I'd be pissed if I was Rock or Row, and I walked in and it was just full like. Cadbury eggs. What is yeah. this? What, Get real, out of here, real quick. What's what's the worst candy in the world? I want your opinion on this. Mm, probably toothpaste. To- toothpaste is not good. It's not. I I don't know many people that would consider mm. that candy, but uh-huh. um, um, I don't know. Whoppers or dog? Yeah, I mean, wop- whoppers are no fun. Um, I mean, like you said, Cadbury eggs. They're the worst. Um, yes, a Kinder Joy, garbage. Yeah, I mean, but I'm. I think I gotta go with like the the weird like caramels in the wrapper, like like that mm, that yeah. you know the elderly carry around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I'm being honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of them. Uh, the, the 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 caramels, not the elderly. Those, those can. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Eli hates old people. Yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes those caramels can be good, but I, I, you're right; they're pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, like it's kind of funny, actually. Like the longer that they sit in the bottom of an old woman's purse, mm-hmm. the better they get. The better they get. They're like fine wine, you know. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's 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 strange, but it's true. Um, yes. Yeah, but let, but let's move on. So. Okay. This one involves two celebrities, but only one made the purchase. Okay, uh, Nicholas Cage yeah. 
Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. beat Leonardo DiCaprio in a bidding war over a stolen Mongolian dinosaur skull. Interesting. Yeah, very, very interesting. Stolen, expensive, dinosaur, extinct, expensive. $35 million. Wow, you you overshot it by a lot. A dinosaur skull that was stolen from Mongolia? Yeah, I mean, like, so here's the thing. We got to set the stage for this. Some Indiana Jones type stole this skull and instead of bringing it back to a a museum like the real Indiana Jones, this guy decided to sell it and most likely he was just thinking like, okay, I'm just going to sell this thing cheap. You know, I just got to get rid of it because I can't hold on to it, you know? So this guy, so Nicolas Cage, uh, he he won the skull in an auction by bidding two hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. Not even he didn't even break a milli. Didn't even break a million. This list is horseshit. In fact, I mean, Magic Johnson spent twenty five million dollars on thirty Burger Kings. You can buy Chick Fil A for ten grand. Yeah, I mean. I mean, like, here's the thing, like, the craziest part is that this is a, it says right here, a 67 million year old Tyrannosaurus Batar Batar skull. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's 67 million years old, according to this, and uh, is bought for 276k. I mean, the rate at least has to be a dime per year. What's that put you at? 66 mil? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, no, that would be that would be a dollar per year. 6 mil? I thought you said 66 mil. I was like that would be like a, that would be a little less than a dollar a year. No, I, I did say I did say 66, but if it's 10 cents, it would be 6. Yeah. I mean, it would be yeah, it would be 6 mil. I mean, it's strange, really. I mean, dinosaur bones, like, I don't know what the market is like for dinosaur bones. I mean, as a business major, do you have any insight for that at all? You know, the market's pretty flooded these days. Right. Um, with all the dinosaur bones that are being sold. Um, no, I have no clue. What I am excited for is in 66 more million years when they have to rent or even build enormous cranes and backhoes to dig up Adam McManus's bones. Yeah. Because I mean, he's, they're just going to be too big. Huge, huge. Absolutely. Yes. It's, it's ab- yes. huge. It's absolutely huge. And uh, <laughs> like, I can't wait. Well, I mean, we won't be here for that. Um, but, well, you know. never say never. Bobby was almost there. Uh, yeah, he was just a little bit off, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of old people, you know Sister Jean is 104 years old? The uh, the, the um, woman from... Loyola, Chicago. Yeah, that's right. 104. A... Well, I mean, she she obviously has the Lord on her side. I mean, so... she's been saying a lot of Hail Marys. She's well, yeah, yeah, doing sure. laps on that rosary to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that's like the only thing. I mean, Good she... for her. And not only that, her entire basic, basically her entire being is devoted to supporting this, you know, uh, Christian basketball team. So, I mean, yes. who, who, I mean, like God is, God is good. So he's going to make sure that, you know, this person is going to live a long life. So yeah. Wow. 104 though. That's amazing. Isn't that crazy? You want to be the sister Jean for Ohio Christian? Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll do you one better. I'll be. <laughs> I'll I'll be the super fan from Bloom Carroll for Ohio Christian. Oh, so, Donnie. Donnie is never going away. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. You show up in a full Trailblazer outfit and like, uh, sir, who are you? Yeah. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Ultimate fan. I, here. Blue. <laughs> I, I make yeah. I make I laminate my own ID card and it says Eli Burgett, ultimate fan. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. 
That would be awesome. Uh, okay, moving on to the next one. So Paris Hilton. Oh, you you know this one's going to be good. Uh, mm-hmm. Spent an absurd amount of money on a villa just for her dogs. As one does. So 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 you got to think about it. It's a villa is basically a giant hotel suite, and uh, you know it's just for her dogs. So where was this villa? I believe. It is in Las Vegas. Where else? Hmm. Dogs. Dogs like to gamble. I'm going to say two million bucks. I'm either way over or way under. You know, you're not you're not as over as you were in the past, but you are over. She spent uh, three hundred and twenty five grand on the villa. Still dumb. Still dumb. Still I mean, way too much money for a dog. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, like, you know, I, I probably won't, I probably won't pay that much for the house that I will live in for the rest of my life. So, I mean, no. I don't like, you know, yeah, I, I, rich people. I don't know what to say. Well, how old is this list? Because there's houses in Pickaway County going for more than 325 grand. I don't know. I mean, I mean, like some people, like okay, so Paris Hilton purchased this back in two thousand nine, so this is a while ago. Okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense because I feel like I had a pretty good grasp on money. Sounds like I don't. Yeah, these. these and per- I mean, we're buying dog houses for less than what we're gonna spend on our houses. Yeah, I mean, like these 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 purchases they they range from like you know late nineties to like you know present day. So I should probably. Okay. I, from now on, I'm gonna establish that. When, when, okay. So we, give me a, just give me a date. Gotcha. All right. So in 2002, Celine Dion bought a humidifier to protect her vocal cords. Is just for just for her vocal cords. Anything special about this humidifier? Or uh, there did is. You go to Menards and pick it up. No, well, there is something special about this humidifier. It costs a lot of money, and it's for Celine Dion. Oh, <laughs> five hundred grand, two million dollars. All right, get out of here. This list is terrible. What? I mean, what? I'm, just, I'm just telling you what it says, dude. I mean, like two it's... million dollars for a dehumidifier or humidifier. Yeah, trying to make it, trying to make it. Come out. This is a humidifier. <laughs> Just drink water. Yeah, it's not not a dehumidifier. Trying to make those vocal cords, Celine. Trying to make those vocal cords. I mean, you try to sing, "My Heart Will Go On," and you know, wow, need some extra damp. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Need some damp vocal cords for that one. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, all right. This one is the last one of the list. Okay. Uh, Kelly Rowland bought a bathtub for Blue Ivy that was crystal studded and it was for babies. It was a baby bathtub. Yes. Uh, the baby didn't come with the bathtub? No, no, no. It did not come with the bathtub. It was for the babies. The babies, if you will. Okay. 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 Um, crystal studded. I mean, if these are some fake crystals, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna go. Here, just think. Trace. This, mm. this one. Yeah. Is, this one is lower than anything we've covered today. Then they're not real crystals. This is a bad gift. Well, probably. I mean, God, this list sucks. Here, it's, it's. It was. It was. Here was it, it was. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. It was one hundred twenty million. No, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> it no, it's so much lower. So much lower. We're we're talking within the like one thousand to ten thousand range. So these crystals were definitely fake. What? Yeah, four thousand bucks. You, you pretty close. It was fifty two hundred dollars. 
I mean, she literally just got on Beyonce's Amazon registry and bought this mother <laughs> fricker. That's so dumb. Exactly. Get out I mean, of here. Who bought this? It was uh, Kelly Rowland. Yeah, she sucks. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, the people on this list, they're not like the most famous people in the world anymore. Like, yeah, because as soon as they bought it, they went bankrupt. We never heard yeah, from them. Exactly. Oh, but one more. I just remembered this. I saw this earlier, but it's not on the list. Um, I'm just going to tell you what it was. So, you know Bono from U2, right? Yes. Uh, you know, shout out Bono, if you ever listen to this. Um, but so Bono has... Huge shout out to Bono. Huge shout out to Bono. Uh, <laughs> Bono has a special cowboy hat. It's his favorite hat. And uh, there was uh, one, con- one concert that they had overseas in Italy where he forgot his hat and he, you know, performed badly, I guess, or it was like bad juju or something. And so the next time they flew somewhere, they flew somewhere for a concert. Bono bought a bought he bought two seats, one for himself and one for his hat. One for his hat. Okay. Wow. And that that set him back that set him back fifteen hundred bucks for the the seat for the hat. Listen, I'm all about getting a place for your hat. If you can't tell. Yeah. But if you're going to bring the hat to the concert, listen, I've been called crazy before. Maybe put it on your head. Maybe wear it. Yeah. I mean, like, look, to to commoners like us, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're always looking for the cheapest option. You know, we mm-hmm. could cho- and we have to choose between, OK, we can spend fifteen hundred dollar seats for a first class seat for a hat or Mm -hmm. we could place it on our head free of charge we could we could mm, hear me out wear the hat as intended or look like a dumbass and buy a seat for it yeah now listen i mean he's got a lot of money he can do with his money whatever he likes but that is just dumb D-U-M. D-U-M dumb. You said it. I mean, mm-hmm. but I mean, like this, at the same time, this seems like classic Bono, I think. Oh, like so Bono. <laughs> like, look, I, I've never met Bono. I don't know Bono as a person. But, but, but this knowing se- Bono, <laughs> but this seems like something Bono would do. I'm just this saying is, like, this, this, this silly little act has Bono written all over it. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. <laughs> oh, oh Bono, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I love that segment. That was a great segment. Uh, looks like I got to go back to finance class because I know nothing about money. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. I mean, you know, uh, for the last time, uh, rest in peace to Bob Barker. Thank you for the the laughs and the smiles and. Uh, Warming the hearts of uh, midday television. Uh, and six year old me, I guess. No. Yeah. I remember I was watching Price is Right. I mean, yeah, you talked you talked about that earlier. I wanted to I wanted to mention that I remember watching the Price is Right when I was hanging out at my grandma's house a lot, but that was when Drew Carey was hosting. So I didn't even see Bob on TV. Wow. No, I saw Bob I mean, I'm almost certain. When did he when was he on? Right. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, go ahead and look it up. But I remember. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> was was that Devin? What is that? What is that? This is a Samoan touch my trunk again. This is a giant Modi. Oh, I'm trying to get back to the camera. <laughs> Oh, buddy. This is a giant Modi piece of bread. Uh, I don't know where he got it, but now it's currently all over my room. And I don't know when Bob Barker stopped doing the prices. He got upset because I dumped water on his truck. He's just being a little sissy about it. Uh, um, But yeah, no, this is going in his tailpipe directly after we lock off. (laughs) Don't even fret. Oh, Um, my God. You just dumped water on his truck? 
Just water. Just just a bottle of water. I mean, you know how I get just joking around. Didn't think it hurt anyone's feelings cleaning his dirty ass truck, but I guess here we are. Me and this moldy piece of bread. Yeah. <laughs> and he got my room dirty. Sorry. No. Oh, well, sorry. No, it's all right. I mean, Cam, but like you really gotta take this as kind of a, a cautionary tale just to stop messing with people who are I bigger. mean you would think. You would think. But it's just a stick he, he texted me, he said, Let me in, I'm outside. I was like, okay. Jimmy said he texted him and said, Let me in, I'm outside. And then he came in with this nasty piece of bread. I mean, I guess it, there's just something sick and twisted in my mind that I just have to I just have to pick with the biggest idiot in the room and it's always Devin. Yeah. And and Cam, th- this goes back this goes back to our early years. I mean, you were always the guy to see the biggest guy in the room and say, Hey, I want to mess with that person. Yes. And I'm gonna do whatever I can. Yes. And I've taken a lot of licks. And I got more to take. Yeah. But I'm here for it. I'm ready to go. I mean, yeah, that's one thing. I mean, I mean, you're not you're not a very good fighter, but no. you can you can take hits like no one. Actually, one of the worst, but I eat punches like no one else. <laughs> That's so true. Remember back in remember back in middle school, we used uh, you used to challenge me to play uh, bloody knuckles, and like, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was so dumb. Why did no, you do that? It was dumb, but like you were like you would get that get that weird look in your eye, and you would just go, "Come on, hit me, hit me in the fist, Eloy, hit me!" And you know, I would I would just start like you know just light tap and everything, and you would wind back, and you would just bring the hammer down right on my feeble you know small hand and well i just want to say i i I appreciate you for somehow sticking around and being my friend for as long as you have because that's just odd behavior (laughs) it's it's so odd behavior but i mean out of all the things that uh um my friend group has done that's not the weirdest thing i mean even you have topped that at some times so no, easily, <laughs> easily. So don't, don't, don't beat yourself up. But yeah, as as we bring this to a close, that's a good lesson for the viewers to take away from this. Yes. No matter how uh, freaking weird your friends are, no matter how much water you dump on your friend's truck, no matter how many loaves of moldy bread get hurled your way, you always <sighs> stick. You always stick with your friends, and you love them for who they are. And I love you, buddy. And I love you, man. You know who I don't love right now is Devin Miller. Huge <laughs> shout out to that loser. Huge oh, shout. I can't wait. Can't wait to shove this bread in his tailpipe, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. You, By the way, you... Bob Barker retired in two thousand seven. Okay. So okay. Well, I mean, I I definitely caught him. Yeah. I definitely caught him in a memory. I I can vaguely remember him. Yeah. So I guess I was a later viewer then, but yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Cam, final words before we log off. Um, this has been great. It's always I'm glad we were able to get on, on tonight. It's always fun with just you and I. It's fun we do it with everyone, but you know, you know, you know how yeah. it goes. I, I know, dude. I know. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even get to the story. I, I had, uh, I went under the knife last week. Little oh. teaser. We'll save that for next week. You want to save that for next week? I mean, you can talk about yeah. it if you want. Let's leave, let's, let's leave them with, uh, a crumb, if you will. Yeah. You ever seen I, you ever seen yellow mold? What is that? That's not mold, dude. That's fungus, if I ever seen it. It smells terrible, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um I mean, yeah. So I, I second everything you say. Uh Thank except for, except for the mold and everything. I I don't I don't I've never experienced yeah. that. But uh from everyone here at I'm No Genius, I am Eli. Damn. And uh it's been great. We will see you next time.